Hello. Welcome everyone. Rebecca Snow here from the Nutrition Herbal Collective. We are doing a Facebook Live about why build a private practice. So at the Nutrition Herbal Collective, we like to help our CNS candidates and interns get their supervised practice experience done while building their private practice. Not everybody builds a private practice. Some people have a job at a large organization. Currently, we have an intern, Stephanie. She's doing um, helping diabetics with modified ketogenic diets. We've got other interns working in doctor's offices, you name it. But a lot of folks really have the vision of having their own private practice. I've had a private practice since 2003. And actually every single one of our supervisors who are CNS supervisors and mentors that work at the Nutrition Herbal Collective have had or currently have a private practice. There's something very enticing and wonderful. Well, there's 10 things really that are wonderful about having a private practice. So I wanted to illustrate some of those. Um, the benefit of launching a private practice while you do your internship is you are feeding two birds with one worm. Basically, um, you are getting hours for seeing clients, but you're also um, doing the legwork and the groundwork so that when you finish your internship, you have an income stream, which is what we want. Um, we want to um, have financial independence doing the work we love. And um, this talk is not about how to get those clients and how to do that work. We have other other videos and talks that we've done all gearing to that. And Sunny's running her Prosperous Practitioner course, which will help you get there. And we do offer business and marketing support in our mentorship program as well. Um, but let's talk about some of the reasons why it is beneficial to launch a private practice. Okay, so number one, you get to set your own schedule and hours. This is one of my favorite reasons for having a private practice. Um, I love being able to set my own schedule. I love the fact that I can start at 7 a.m. or I could start at 10 a.m. Um, I mean, I just went on holiday last week and I did some late night stints this week just to catch up, which is great. I would much... I love the flexibility. I'm a working mom. I take care of my own aging mother. My daughter does a lot of after school activities. I need flexibility. A nine to five job doesn't work well for me. So that is one of the main reasons I love um, having a private practice. And we can also decide how much we wanna work. So when we're applying for jobs at larger corporations, um, doctor's offices, um, various clinics, or in academia or research, our schedule is largely set for us, um, determined, you know, based on what the organization is. But if we have our own private practice, we can decide maybe you only want to work 20 hours a week and you're going to take five clients a week or 10 clients a week. Maybe you have 10 billable hours. Um, now, keep in mind that as a nutritionist, one of my favorite lines from Sunny is all um, part time work is full time work. Is that the line? Um, but essentially what she's saying is that even if you work part time, like let's say you have like for me, I have 25 billable hours a week. So in my healthy calendar, clients and interns can book with me 25 hours a week approximately. Do I only work 25 hours a week? No, I run two businesses. Um, I have six people on my team and I work definitely more than 40 hours a week. So, um, you know, your billable hours will not be your total hours a week. So you do need to think about that. How much time are you setting aside for admin work, for um, doing your client write-ups, research, staying current in the field, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but regardless of how you divide up your time, um, you can 
you can determine how many hours a week you're going to work. So, you know, if it's just when the kids are in school, or maybe you only do four days a week or three days a week, maybe you need to set two days aside for something else. But that is definitely one of the perks. Number three, you set your own rates and rules of engagement. So you, I mean, um, now along with this number three is the fact that people in private practice make more than people who are not in private practice as a nutritionist. If you look at the salaries of nutritionists in a state or nationwide, I mean, the range is huge. Um, you could have like a starting job, you know, being like a dietetic assistant in a hospital or um, being an assistant in a medical office for 30,000 a year, which might be around minimum wage, or you could, you know, and then you look at the far other end of the spectrum, you know, somebody in private practice could, you know, is six plus, you know, six figures plus plus. So private practice, definitely the earning potential is much, much greater. It does take a lot of work. You do need to learn how to market yourself. There's some blood, sweat and tears, but if you can make it work, the earning potential is much higher. You can also set your own rates. Um, somebody who works in, um, you know, in in the country or in you know West Virginia, Middle America, versus somebody who works in a big city like New York City, San Francisco, they're going to charge very different rates based on who their audience is. Somebody in New York City could charge three to four times more than somebody in another part of the country. So you have to do your market research and see what is the going rate for your niche, for your area, for your geographic, for your audience. You also get to set your own rules of engagement. Um, I don't like texting with clients. Um, if I get a text and I forget to respond, I'll forget about it. But email, I don't, unless I accidentally delete an email, I don't forget about emails. I keep them in my inbox and I only delete them once I respond to them. So I'm also not a big phone person. Um, so you get to decide how you wanna communicate with clients, how much you wanna charge clients. Do you wanna do packages? Do you wanna just charge for individual appointments? Do you wanna do programs? You get to design your fees, how you communicate with people, and therefore you get to um, you get to determine your earning potential. Number four, you get awesome office mates. Now, if you're working virtual, which I am and most nutritionists are these days because there's low overhead, um, you might be at home for most of the day. So although we do get to work with our pets and there's Bovril, my Shetland sheepdog, who's a two-year-old male, hanging out in the chair where my clients sit. So then I have to take, you know, get those hairs off there. But you do get awesome office mates. We get to work near family, near pets. That could be a pro or con, um, i.e. the Shetland sheepdog hair on my, you know, office chair. But um, pro is we get the comforts of our own home. Um, and I love to always have like a blanket nearby so I can stay warm when it's cold outside. I've always got my beverage of choice. Um, so yes, like we get to, you know, work in a comfortable environment, but keep in mind that one can feel socially isolated working at home 100% of the time, you know, if you're by yourself. So do design social interaction, whether it's going to a gym or getting together with friends or um, joining the CNS mastermind. There's all kinds of ways you can develop a community. Okay, so number five, and honestly, anybody who's working with clients or patients gets to witness meaningful change in people's lives. Um, and that's really a benefit of clinical practice. So we get to be a witness, we get to be a facilitator, um, we get to work with people through challenging times in their lives and make a difference in people's lives, which I love. Number six, you can become an expert in one particular niche. Niching down is so important. 
for building a successful private practice. You need to be able to speak to a particular person, a particular audience to design your elevator speech, your, you know, your written materials. What topics are you going to post about on social media or your blog post? What are you going to say on your website? It's all targeted to that specific niche. But the benefit of targeting that niche is that you can become an expert in a particular area. Um, you know, all the research you're going to be reading about fertility or about IBS or uh, bloating and digestive issues. Um, it's kind of exciting because after, you know, a few years of practice, you will really know a lot about one area. And that's not going to limit your ability to learn about other areas. Because let's say you specialize in fertility, you're going to have clients coming in with high blood pressure or constipation or depression. People don't just have one issue. People have multiple issues. So whatever you niche in, it's not going to keep you from learning about other topics. Number seven, you get to do a variety of activities in a private practice. So private practice doesn't mean you're only doing one-on-one -on -one consulting. We are not limited to that as income stream. Now it tends to be one of the best income streams, one-on-one -on -one consulting, but there are so many um, things you can do to earn money in your private practice. And I actually printed a list here. You could meal planning so that's a, a separate thing you can also have you can do kind of um kind of adjunct services such as pantry rehabs um, grocery store tours you can run group programs um, you can give talks and webinars both through your business or through other organizations supplement sales um, through an online dispensary or in person Affiliate programs, which I'm just starting to learn about, um, blog writing or article writing. I used to write articles for an organization at a dollar a word. Um, consulting work and then passive income streams. So programs and meal plans and things that you're selling on your website um, as a separate purchase. So those passive income streams are huge because one of the limiting factors about running a private practice is that, um, I mean, if we're only charging for our bill, you know, if our billable hours is the only place where we're making money, it's just limited by how much we practice, right? So um, building some passive income streams is a great thing to do in your private practice. And um, Sunny talks about that more in our Prosperous Practitioner course. So you can keep overhead super low in a private practice. Um, just be careful of all those amazing memberships that you can get. Um, I started to list all the memberships I have and I was like, wow, okay, I've got a lot of memberships. But in early practice, you don't really need to pay for QuickBooks. You don't really need to um, you know, pay for uh, a newsletter. There's plenty of free newsletter sites out there like um, MailChimp for example. Um, there are even free scheduling softwares like Appointee is free. So, you know, you can keep your overhead super low to make sure that you're not, that you're operating in the green early on in practice. And as you grow and as you bring in more income, you can always add more features to, you, to create easier systems. Um, in our internship onboarding course for our mentorship program, we have a module about um, charting and uh, intake flows for patients without EMR. We do use Google Workspace in our mentorship program, and you can use Google Workspace for a bit of a homemade EMR to keep your overhead low. And of course, virtual practice overhead is extremely low because you're not paying additional rent. And number nine, you can wear yoga pants every day. Um, Today, I am actually wearing black slacks, but it is not uncommon to find me sitting here in my office with my office, give you a little tour, with yoga pants on, casual on bottom, business on top. The pandemic definitely taught us that we can be comfortable and professional. Um, we don't need to be with and this field, as a nutritionist, herbalist, health coach, you do not need to be wearing a business suit. I don't think many people wear business suits anymore. 
Um, and we do want to dress to impress. We do want to be professional. We want to present ourselves um, with confidence. And so putting on makeup and earrings and, you know, whenever I get dressed nicely, I do feel more confident and I feel more ready for the workday. So I think it's important even when we're working at home to present ourselves um, well, but it doesn't mean we can't be comfortable too. And also when we're doing our client write-ups, that's a great time to be in pajamas or yoga pants. Um, I love, you know, when my work day is over and I need to get a few or my, my active client consults are over that I can kind of get comfy and do the rest of my work day. Um, and number 10, last but not least, you have more autonomy, which is the global, the global perk of running your own private practice, being your own boss, setting your own hours, setting your own rates. Um, you get to design your own work culture. Um, you get to design if you hire other people to work with you or if you work independently. Um, now, there definitely are pros and cons for group clinical practice versus private practice. In a group clinical practice, if you're working with a doctoral level practitioner, you get to learn from them and you get that collaboration, which is amazing. And your scope may be smaller because if you're working with an ND or an MD, they'll be running the labs, they'll be doing the supplements, you are gonna stick more in the food realm, which is great and fine, but maybe you do want to um, do more lab ordering or supplement recommending within your scope. Um, in a private practice, you do get more wiggle room to have that full nutritionist scope. Um, but even if you are on your own, I highly recommend building a community for referrals because we're gonna see things that are outside our scope. We need to refer out. Um, we want our clients to have a team of practitioners, not just you know one person um, to help them. So it's nice to be on your own in private practice because you do get to design your practice the way you want it to be, um, but do stay connected to other practitioners for referrals um, for your, your client's benefit. And that's what I've got for 10 reasons to build a private practice. Um, in our mentorship program, we run a practice building working group once a month, which answers questions about how to get clients, how to niche down, how to design your social media campaign or your website or whatever you need to do to grow. And we also have one-on-one -on -one supervisor sessions twice a month for all of our interns to discuss these various topics with a CNS approved supervisor. Well, thanks for listening everyone. And um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you have any questions, just email us info at nutritionherbalcollective.com. Thanks, bye-bye.